Welcome to Wednesday's episode of Will I Ever Get Past the Movement of Pac-Man, which I have. Whoa. Um, so in this episode, we're going to be looking at um, trying to make sure the movement is perfect, because at the moment, um, you can change direction to stop Pac-Man, which in the real game won't happen. Um, you can stop Pac-Man in the real game. If, for instance, you go up and you reach the end, Pac-Man will stop. But if you click left, Pac-Man will keep going up until you can go left. Um, so I think that's quite important in the game to have that in there because part of the, the good thing about or part of the enjoyment with Pac-Man is it feels quite high like high risk, quite fast paced. Um, there's also some issues, I think, with the food. I've done too much food. So I think in the actual game there's not any food in this middle bit. Um, so we can look into into that as well. Um, so let's get started straight away. So um, let's just reset this. If I'm walking along and I press up here, I don't want Pac-Man to stop there. I want Pac-Man to keep going and only go up when an up is available. Um, and part of the issue is that as soon as you press the direction, it is um, updating the direction here. And we kind of want there to be a kind of uh, a step which checks to see whether that's available yet and so we need to have like two counters we need a direction um, and a desired direction should we say so we've got a direction here and then um, we want this to be called uh, desired direction it's always something I love in um, click team is that you can just write in whatever you want it to be called. Just use whatever words you want. You're not having to remember a whole load of numbers. You can actually put um, words to these. Um, right, so when you click direction, I don't want this to be looking at the direction. I want this to be looking at, well, when you click direction, I want that to update the desired direction. So what you can do is just drag this next to the desired direction because these are essentially the same thing. I'll put this to the left of it because this is where we want the direction to be. Right. So when the user clicks right, they have a desired direction. They want to go right. But we need an, uh, a part in here which checks to see whether they can actually go that direction. Right. And so... I th I'm trying to think, um, I don't know, insert, compare two general values. And we want to say if the desired direction is different. So if the desired direction is different to the actual direction, does that make sense? Right, let's <laughs> say it does. And then insert, if the, I could do this within the actual thing itself. If the desired direction is right. So if you want to turn right and you're currently not turning right, <laughs> then we need to check that you can turn right. right. We need to check that you can turn right, which is this condition here saying if the right one is available, right? That makes sense. Uh, yeah. And if you can turn right, brilliant, go for it. So we're just going to say, yeah, that's that's hunky-dory. Update that. And in fact, we could just say make that the same as the desired direction. Okay. And we're going to repeat this. Uh, I'm just going to maybe copy and paste this for each of the directions. So down, left, and up. And so with um, down, the plus one will be here. With left, it'll be a minus one. And with up, it will be a minus one here. And yeah, 
Now, can that be? Can that? Can it be possible that that is all we need to do? Probably not. But we're going to test it just in case I've nailed it first time. So right down, right. So I haven't broken the movement. Okay, so I'm going to get to the end here, and I'm going to click right, and then up. Wow. This is like the first time in my life that I've coded something to do with, uh, I don't know, array-based movements, and I've actually nailed it first time. If there was a trophy out there, I would want it. <laughs> now, one of the issues is that his direction shouldn't change until he can actually move there. So this should be in control of the direction. So all of these should be down here. So let's get rid of these. And let's run it now and see. So I'm going to get to the bottom here. And I'm going to click left and up straight away. Okay. So up. This is like, what are we in? Six minutes in and I've reached my minimum viable product for this video. Wow. This is going well. Let's just keep going. Uh, so we eat the food. So we sort out the food. Uh, let's do that. So uh, let's go back to the completed one. Uh, I'll get rid of my lines and the Pac-Man. And we can see that there are... So there are down here and down here. In fact, we can get rid of the... Um, get rid of the guides for now. Uh, clear guides. Um, so we don't have them here. We don't have them here. We don't have them here. I'm trying to figure out whether there's a clever way of doing this and say, what, what is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So f 10 onwards. So if it's 10 or higher. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out whether we can. So where in the code do we delete that? Where in the code do we delete the can't even remember where we do it so we create it's these ones here and we create them here uh, okay so we've we've been quite lazy the way we've done it I'm wondering whether I'm wondering whether we should do this with a CSV and just hmm I'm wondering whether so let's have a look at our CSV. I'm wondering whether we should have the the ones here with um, food a different number, or the ones without food. In fact, haven't we got already got ones? Oh, we've got these 33. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the ones without food a different number, uh, which is probably easier said than done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause this video and I'm going to painstakingly go through and change all the tiles that don't have food to 34. Cool. I'll see you there. Okay. <laughs> that was quick for you. Not so much for me. Um, let's give it a run. <clears throat> now, the thing won't work properly for movement, um, but you can see we've cleared out almost all of them. So I think... I've missed some out. Uh, yeah, there's <clears throat> they just kind of stopped. There's not that that extra one there. So let's make that magically disappear. Beautiful, as if by magic. Okay, so the issue is that <clears throat> we're using the fact that it's 32 to give it a green light, um, but it's not 32. So we need to uh, figure that out. Um, so. So this part here says, is it equal to 32? And if it is, gravy. Now, there's two ways I could tackle this. I could um, change this so that it's 32 or 34. Or what I could do is, after it's created here, um, change it to um, 34. Now, the issue is that I need to make sure... Well, it's useful for me to have it in the array 
where the food is. Um, we can also remove this. We can remove that. Um, I need to have it in the array where the food is. So it's probably, even though it's irritating, it's probably more helpful to have this as an or um, for 32. Um, hmm. Or the alternative is I create a new layer onto the array, which I would probably prefer because changing all of these, having an or statement is just going to make this code like mad. Um, so we already loop through the array here. Um, so what I can do is I can add, um, I can just create uh, a new layer to the array. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set, so I'm going to write value to x, y, z. And the value is just whatever is in our array at zero. And we're going to have just the x there, the y there. And this time we're going to write it to the z, which is 1. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to say if, if it's equal to 32, and actually I could just put a 1 there to say, yep, if it's equal to 32, there's a 1 that goes there. If it's equal to 34, there's also a 1 there because they're all walkable. Otherwise, in fact, I could just put a, a thing first that just writes a 0. So we're going to put a 0 in to every all of them. And then we're going to overwrite it with a 1 if there's a 32 or a 34 there. Then with these ones, we're just looking into that, that 1 array and we're seeing whether it equals 1. I think this makes sense. It makes sense in my head. Whether it makes sense in reality, on the other hand, <laughs> we're yet to see. So we've created um, a second layer on this array. It's like um, using a new array, really. There's no difference, is there? Um, and on this second layer, it's just a zero anytime you can't walk on it, and a one anytime you can. Moment of truth, and the movement works fine. And let's check move. Let's check walking. Yeah absolutely fine this this is like an impossible episode where literally everything I'm touching is working which is astonishing um, <laughs> I, I don't don't really know what's happening if I'm honest um, so yeah cool um, <laughs> so we start eating them what, what are we on 13 minutes I reckon we could start thinking about eating them so the the part of which we check to see whether we can eat them is this part here because this is where we hit the crosshairs and the crosshairs is where the food is um so we need some check to see if the current in fact i've just deleted that check haven't i <laughs> if the current um, place we're at and i've just copied and pasted that because it's really only this we need i'm just going to delete everything else if the current one is a 32 we need to change it to a 34 right so if the current one are we well i don't want to check if the current one we are at, i'm just wondering actually yeah so if the current one we're at is equal to 32 and here's the problem is that we've created these tiles so we need some way of deleting them maybe we'll do that next episode um yeah I think I think it's wise to that next episode because um, we'll be talking about putting alterable values to each of the foods so that we can destroy the right one, um, which will be useful in a full episode. So this has been one heck of a, an episode. I think Wednesday's lucky for me. Wednesday's a good day. Um, so tomorrow we'll be eating the food. That would be good. And we'll look into getting some sound effects on it. 
although I don't know whether I've got an audio source on my PC, but you probably hear it through this mic. So um, thank you very much for watching this video. If you want to see more from us, click subscribe, like, and make sure you comment. I will read all the comments. Um, and yeah, just <laughs> stay, I don't know, I'm looking for a catchphrase. Stay fruity.